I'm Tracy Bird. Welcome to the Outdoor Channel Circle of Honor, where we celebrate individuals that have made a significant impact in the world of the outdoors. Some draw attention to outdoor sports through celebrity status, some through their conservation efforts, and some for excelling in various facets of the outdoors. Circle of Honor is our way of saying thanks to those great people. Today's show is an extremely special one for us, as we pay tribute to the man who with a vision and literally a pot full of gold, founded Gold Prospectors Association of America, Global Outdoors Incorporated, and ultimately, the Outdoor Channel. His name is George Buzzard Massey. He passed away in 1993 at the young age of 54, but he's left us with a great legacy. It is with great pride that the Outdoor Channel today still strives to maintain programming that is consistent with George's ideals about good morals, family values, getting back to nature, and supporting our American traditions. I'm happy to turn this over to his family and friends now to tell you about the life and character of George Buzzard Massey. Well, he always considered himself a hillbilly, you know, uh, he grew up barefoot running around the hills there in Caneyville, Kentucky, and they never really knew they were poor till Lady Bird Johnson told them they had to wear shoes, you know. Well, I believe his, uh, his mom and dad uh, moved from, Col from Kentucky to California. When he went into the Air Force, he was uh, stationed in Riverside at, at March Base. And that's where he uh, started to um, stay in California and go to school here. And then after that, we met. Well, he had his charm, but he was also also very handsome. And he was he had qualities that that I was looking for. He was honest, and he was uh, a good a good Christian person. And uh, he. Um, he was just, he just loved life, and I liked, I, I loved listening to him. He just, he just had me, me so interesting in his stories that I fell in love with him right away, and, and we were inseparable after that. And two weeks later, he gave me an engagement ring, and a month later, he, he mar we got married. And it was fan the luckiest, because we were married 33 years, and it was 33 years of my happiest times. And, and uh, he was a good husband and a good father. He loved his boys. Although George didn't start out prospecting for a living, he did have some exposure to it early in his life. This is stuff that he'd tell me, you know, about his Uncle John and going to Alaska and participating in the gold rush. And so those stories kind of got him thinking about gold and they'd run down to the hollows and down to the creeks and try and look for gold. And it kind of was the start of his idea of prospecting was from his Uncle John. Then they moved uh, uh, out to California when he was younger and uh, when we went up to Montana, I guess he was elk hunting. And they come across a prospector out there in the hills and showed him some big fruit jars full of gold. His name was Doc Kessler and he had claims along St. Joe, the headwaters of the St. Joe River. And we got to be friends with him and, and my dad uh, decided to try prospecting with him and so the way we got started in prospecting was meeting an old prospector and, and getting gold fever by talking and hearing his stories and he started prospecting that way and we got our own claims and started digging and, and uh, we all sort of learned prospecting together as a group. And so the gold fever started. Stay tuned to find out how prospecting eventually became a way of life for the Massey family. I remember uh, hiding in the back of my dad's car on his way to work, uh, fighting traffic in Los Angeles, going to work in some sales department uh, there, and how much he hated that. But uh, I think one day he just got fed up with life in LA and decided to get his family to a more rural area and he, we took a summer trip one year and we drove from Los Angeles, we went north all the way through Oregon and Washington and Idaho and, and I think his favorite place wound up being up in northern Idaho, uh, eastern Washington area. And the first day we were there, Perry slept through the night. He had a some kind of an asthma problem and he never really slept through the night very good in Los Angeles so I said after the third day, I said, I'm getting plenty of rest myself. I'm not moving back. And he said, I agree with you. So he went home 
and we went into a furnished apartment and stayed there until he got back and he went and got all our stuff and sold the house and and just did everything and and uh, told the people he was leaving and they couldn't believe it. They offered him race and everything. They said, you can't leave us. We really wanted you. And he said, well, my family's more important. So he came back and we uh, started our own business. And he had our own rent business so he could be home with his family. After the move to Idaho, George started his own business and the Masseys took up mining as a hobby. When we first moved up there, we moved to Liberty Lake, Washington. and. Uh, as a child, I remember the, the beauty of getting out of the city versus being in a place where there's woods and trees and I could build forts and it was, it was really fun for me to live there. We decided to go out in the country a lot. There's just so many things to do. And um, he got where he was out in the, in the we got a, uh, a trailer and we went out 80 miles sometimes. And we just did our own thing and we were out there with uh, checking things out and there was old cabins with a metal detector and, and, and they were looking for anything they could find that was something different so they found gold and that's that's when it started he found gold and, and he said my gosh I found gold so he started to work with that that was our thing that was our hobby at the time we we're going to go gold mining oh this is great so that's part of how he started on gold prospect uh, we really didn't have any long history of, of, of prospecting in our family. We just sort of fell into it in our old hunting grounds and, and uh, I learned along with my dad uh, as we went along and slowly but surely we developed our own prospecting techniques. As George got more involved in mining, he also became more passionate about protecting the rights of miners and their way of life. And that is when he got the idea to form Gold Prospectors Association of America. The main mission of GPA is to help educate the public on what prospecting is all about. We also teach them the tools and provide them with places to go so that there's always going to be people out prospecting is what our goal is. And then also to try to lobby as much as we can to protect our rights to have the access to that public land. Now there's a, there's a big land grab going on by certain environmental groups that have gone kind of wacko on us lately and, and they're out there trying to grab this land for their very own or even in some instances to take private land and make these guys a custodian for uh, the spotted owl or the, the desert tortoise or the kangaroo rat uh, without due compensation. I'm not, I'm not adverse to, and, uh, to, to protecting these different species. I think we need to do that, but if we're we want to do that then we should be willing to pay for that land not just take a man's private land and tell him that we're going to make you a custodian for that and devalue your property to the point to where it's almost worthless and, and there's a big controversy going on about that. In the early 80s George and his boys were prospecting on the Stanislaus River in California when what to their wondering eyes should appear but the mother load of gold that would last through the years. Prospecting is something that I think George got into when he was showed by an old time prospector up in Idaho about gold and this still was out there and it was one of those things you kind of latch onto. It struck a chord right in his heart and his soul. And then, you know, right around 1980 or 79, 80, he hit that uh, personal mother load for a small time operation when you had you and your sons working on a, a little mining operation up on the river in the mother load of California. What they did in 1979 and 80 was basically hit the mother load. They hit that pocket up on the Stanislaus River and they pulled out like 800 ounces in, in two weeks, you know, and that's amazing. And that's when gold was hitting up around 850 bucks an ounce. So that was uh, quite a triumph. I mean, that's what every prospector dreams of doing. And he did it. And it was by accident that they found it. I'm sure one of the boys would have told you that, but they found nice gold and we had to make a, a run to the bank to put it in the vault there. Yeah, that was really nice. So it was an, a, a really uh, a, a bonus because they have just been doing it as a fun, being together. And then when they found the gold, the mother, they called the, the, pot, the pothole gold or the, the mother load or something they, that the old timers didn't get. It was a bonus and they were so happy with that. 
George received quite a bit of notoriety for his prospecting efforts, including a special appearance on the Merv Griffin Show and a commercial contract with Home Savings Bank. They found out that he had found all this gold, and that's when Merv Griffin called him on the show to show the gold. And that's when we went on the Merv Griffin Show to show the gold and to talk about how he, how he was a prospector. And uh, when we got there, they didn't know. They thought it was an old prospect with a beard and stuff. And here comes the young man. And as long as we're going to be talking about gold, we thought it'd be nice to look at some. We have behind this screen to my left here a bit of gold. And we're going to give you a demonstration on how you can acquire for yourself some of the most precious commodity in the world, the glittering stuff. Because we have a real live prospector with us who's going to show us today how to pan for gold. Oh, would you remove the screen? Ladies and gentlemen, here's a million and a half dollars worth of gold sitting right here. Just look at that. Okay? Ready. Here we go. <laughs> It's in every shape and form, the vials, as you can see. This is all stuff that has been prospected by the gentleman you're going to meet after this commercial here in America. It is very exciting. And you'll meet prospector George Massey right after this commercial break. My uh, first guest suggests that we just go out and prospect for it ourselves. That's what he does. He's George Massey, president of the Gold Prospectors Association of America. And he's here to show us how he looks for and finds gold in them thar hills. Here's the old prospector himself, George Massey. George? <laughs> There's a happy-looking man, would you say? Huh? Are you a happy man? Oh, you better believe it. How much? Have you panned approximately in weight? Merv, there's been more gold through my pan than I weigh. Are you serious? Uh huh. And I'm overweight. <laughs> Just keep that weight coming there, George. And George Massey. Thank you, George. And then uh, from that there became in the commercials. They wanted George to do commercials, so he did commercials for uh, home savings. And he wasn't going to do it, but I said, I think it'd be fun to do. And because he, he wanted to do good, but he didn't want to feel like, well, look at me. So I said, well, you're so natural, you should do it. So he, and then after he did it, he said, yeah, it's okay, I'll, you know, it's all right. So he had a good time doing it, too. Aside from television coverage, George's success at the Stanislaus River brought him all kinds of press coverage, which helped him and GPAA promote gold prospecting all over the United States. They also found another avenue for showing off what he loved to do through his own television show. It was through his show that he was able to communicate with his fans and convey a lot of the politics and freedoms that he felt passionate about. It was George's goal and passion to educate people about these freedoms through the use of the television medium that ultimately led to the birth of the Outdoor Channel. And the Outdoor Channel uses his philosophies as a guide for its programming choices even today. We, we never really thought of my dad as a TV personality when, when we were younger, but he could get in front of a crowd and just totally mesmerize the crowd, hold their attention, and come across as uh, an unbelievable uh, personality. Uh, he, he could hold people's attention where you would think they would get bored, but they were just excited and more excited to see what he had to say. And it was a natural talent that, that he had that... Uh, once he got behind the camera and saw the reaction of people that uh, after they saw him on TV, it sort of reinforced that. And I remember going to uh, some of the gold shows, like in Las Vegas, we have a convention, and there'd be 50 kids lined up to get his autograph, and that just made him feel really good. And he, he loved to see, have the feeling that he was encouraging families and kids, especially, get out and prospect. The thing about George was is that when people remember him and seen him on TV on his school prospector shows and he had that down that and, and, and some people might think that that was an it was an act it was him putting on a persona on TV well when you saw him out in real life he was not one bit different he was the very same person out in real life as you saw on TV and that's rare I mean you know that's that's a, that's a rare quality he had that charisma out there that would naturally attract people. And uh, that's something that's a gift that people do, because he was a natural born leader. 
he always wore his feelings on his shirt sleeve. And you know, every time that he was ever on camera or up in front of anybody, it was always just him. There was never any acting. It was always George Massey. Uh, and he would uh, get passionate about you know, prospectors and he would see an injustice and then he would try and write it. He wouldn't just, you know, pass it over and say, you know, well, there's nothing that I can really do. He would get involved and try and do something. A lot of people remember George fondly. Let's hear what these folks had to say. Everyone that, that, that met George and went camping with him or went gold mining with him or whatever they did, uh, still remember him, they'll always remember him. And then the new people that come on, they watch some of the old films that, that we had, and they'll come up to me and they say, gee, I wish I, I wish I had known that guy. I wish I had joined the club earlier and, and met George and been in on all the, all the jokes and all the fun that, that you guys had. And I, I really appreciate the fact that, that I had a, a number of real good years to go to Alaska and be with him and, and have, have all that fun. I think that some of the most important things my dad has taught me is he's taught me to determination and he's taught me to, to, to respect other people and, and to have an open mind and, and, and uh, try to keep a frame of reference that, you know, an open mind so that you can understand what other people are thinking and, and try to change with the times and, and uh, if you've got something you believe in, stick with it. And, uh, some of, the, some of the values that he's taught us. He's, he's taught me some great values and, and you know, I think about them all the time. <laughs> I think a good reflection of, of George and uh, how his philosophy towards life and was and not only the hard work aspect, but if he saw something that, you know, he wanted to do, he would go out and do it. It wasn't a matter of sitting there and said, well, uh, this is going to be hard to do and or you know, you know, are we likely to succeed here or not, you know. If he saw something and it made sense to him, he would go out and do it. And we would do what it took to get that job done. This was a man's man. He was a very traditional in nature. He believed in the hard work ethic. Uh, I think that's what attracted a lot of people that liked George was that this wasn't a, he definitely wasn't a sissy guy here, you know, this was a, he was a man's man who did things in a very traditional way, so it really appealed to me personally. Well, George Buzzard Massey, first of all, he was a great father, and he had a lot of characteristics that I really admire, and one of them was that he was never too good for anybody, no matter how much success he had. He always had time for anybody. I mean, if it was going up in front of Congress and speaking and to congressmen, and he treated them just the same as he'd treat somebody back in the woods in a cabin someplace down on their luck, he treated everybody equal, and I really admired him for that. Meeting George Mass, it was a turning point in my life. And, and I'm in a position today and I count my blessings that I'm here. And it's because of George. And he taught me so many of the uh, qualities and skills that I have today. He was the one that taught me those skills. To, and it, but he, he would allow you to flourish and, and, and become whatever you could be because that was the basic philosophy he lived by. That's uh, something really unique out there with, uh, about George, you know. You know, when he passed away, you know, I tell you what, it was, it was like losing my, uh, my older brother or my father. It was just as hard. He was always looked at the good, so he always liked everybody. So right away he got returned that way. So that's why his, his charisma was so beautiful. It was, it's a gift. And uh, it, was, it was something that caught my eye right away. So, and and uh, he, he had that, that beautiful quality where people liked him. And uh, he was always, uh, uh, he never would talk bad about nobody. He was always, saw good things with people. And that's, I think, his good qualities. Yeah, he, was, uh, he was just uh, a happy man. He was happy and content. It ain't so easy to find, but it sure is sweet when you find it. 
And I'll tell you what, it's pretty and it's yellow and it's worth a lot of money when you do get it. You can, you can find gold just about everywhere in the United States. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is George Massey. I'm a gold miner. At least that's what I call myself. I ain't anything else. One of you guys want to bring that artifact over here? We don't want to talk too much about artifact. We'll have the archaeological people down here wanting to wanting to dig around on our property, you know, and wanting us to stop gold mining until they can come down and do their educated crap, I guess. So ladies and gentlemen, until next time, this is the old buzzard here and his friends, and we'll be seeing you on uh, next week's show. When we reflect on the memory of George Massey, it's clear that we celebrate a person that had an amazingly genuine approach to life and a very special ability to deal with people from all walks. He was a true prospecting spirit that lives on today in everything that he has helped create, and for that we are grateful. I'm Tracy Bird, and we'll see you next time on Circle of Honor.